Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Brazil is definitely having a moment, which is why the six of us are up here. And uh, you know, at a moment, at a time when uh, North America, the UK, and the rest of uh, the European community are tightening their belts in a time of austerity. Brazil's booming, seven and a half percent growth last year, um, an a, 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 a currency that's strengthened against the dollar, the pound, and the euro um, in an amazing way, which makes it um, possible for uh, international acts to now, uh, for Brazilian promoters to bring bigger acts in, and for promoters abroad, acts abroad, to think about Brazil. Um, as a very promising market, 200 million people almost. Um, you know, when I wrote this book and it came out last year, uh, I talked about Brazil as the eighth largest economy in the world. Well, now it's seventh. It's ahead of uh, past Italy. The, pr the, the predictions are that in the next decade it's going to pass both Britain and France to become number five. So that's why we're here today. I've been asked to do a, a, a brief little bit of a, of a um, excerpt from this book to give you a sense of the, the context of Brazilian culture so that then the rest of us here at the table can talk about some specific things about the country and doing business and what they do. So off we go. Um, from the start, Brazilian culture has been a blend of European, African, and indigenous elements. But as Brazilians see it, their relationship with the rest of the world is one in which they avidly consume and digest artistic artifacts coming from abroad, whether French novels in the 19th century or Hollywood movies and British pop music in the 20th. And in doing so, transform those artifacts into something different, something that acquires a uniquely Brazilian character and flavor and is then re-exported to the rest of the world. The Bossa Nova, for example, was born largely out of Antonio Carlos Jobim's fascination with American jazz and with romantic classical composers such as Chopin. But he absorbed those influences and produced something new that is quintessentially Brazilian. Brazilians excel at those creative activities in which the ability to adjust on the spot and improvise is most useful and highly valued such as music and dance. It probably makes sense to add as well soccer to that list because the Brazilians took a, a s often stodgy, physically clumsy sport um, born on the playing fields of oh so proper British public schools and transformed it into a joyous spectacle of dance and theater appreciated around the world. In the arts, Brazilians have cannibalized and added their own character to everything from music to architecture. Where but in Rio de Janeiro, birthplace of the samba, would the managers of a beachfront restaurant feel it necessary to warn clients that, quote, it is expressly forbidden to pound out rhythms while eating at the tables? In how many other countries do passengers on buses spontaneously break into song and play a samba beat on the vehicle's window seats and rails? But that is life in Brazil, a country where an explosion of creativity always seems about to emerge. Quote, when it comes to popular music, the only three places that really count for anything are Brazil, Cuba, and the United States. The bossa nova composer, Antonio Carlos Jobim, uh, said in an interview I did with him in 1980 in the garden of his home in Rio, all the rest is waltzes. Now, Jobim's statement was meant to be provocative but in an amusingly roundabout way, he was making two fundamentally unassailable points. Brazil is a musical superpower, and it has become so thanks mainly to the seemingly inexhaustible ability of its musicians and songwriters to invent new rhythms and harmonies and avoid the plodding predictabilities of the European song tradition. The samba and its gentler offshoot, the bossa nova, are obviously the best known examples of the Brazilian popular music tradition. But while the casual listener may not be aware of it, lesser known Brazilian styles ranging from maracatu and machixe to the frevo and forró, not to mention axé, baião, and pagode have insinuated themselves into the work of some of the most influential pop, international pop stars of recent decades, including Paul Simon, Michael Jackson, the Rolling Stones, Talking Heads, Peter Gabriel, Sting, Eric Clapton, Beck, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Nelly Furtado, and Devandra Banhart. That's just in the English-speaking world. In 
In places like France and Italy and Spanish-speaking Latin America, the impact probably runs even deeper. Brazilian artists have also made a mark for themselves abroad, led by Caetano Veloso and Gilberto Gil, the founders and theorists of the movement known as Tropicalismo. Jazz ensembles such as those of Miles Davis and Chip Correa, as well as jazz rock bands, um, have had Brazilian members who left their stamp on the music both rhythmically and in determining the band's repertoire. More recently, Brazilian DJs uh, have also um, toured the world and become influences on electronica house, trip hop, and drums and bass movements. Enchanted by the music coming out of Brazil, foreign artists ranging from MIA and a Asian Dub Foundation to Diplo of, of Holantrix, Holotron, excuse me, have visited Brazil hoping to sample the wellspring of innovative sounds directly at its source. Okay, that's, that's for starters. Um, I'm going to go back here now and um, let the other folks uh, talk a little bit, and then we're going to um, bounce the ball around and, and have a, a conversation. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, I was told to introduce myself. My name is Luiz Arico. I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I started uh, in dance music in the mid-90s, um, promoting club and then festival, and then events, and now I run an agency who manages and do bookings for almost 100 Brazilian artists, and also tour, do tours with international acts, and that's me. Um, <coughs> my name's Leo, I'm one half of Leo and Bushwacker. I've been involved in electronic music since 88. Um, I opened The End in 95, which I sold two years ago. Um, I've toured the world, you know, 10, 15 times over. Um, I've been going to Brazil for about 12 years. I probably have done maybe in excess of 250 gigs there um, in that period. And I'm very, very, very kind of involved in the culture. Um, my wife's now Brazilian. Um, I think I have a, a good insight from a European perspective. Hello, my name is Claudio. Uh, my company is Directa. I'm based on Rio and Sao Paulo. I, I am uh, one of the organizers of the Rio Music Conference. It's now uh, the largest gathering of entertainment and electronic music in South America uh, that I will talk a little bit uh, in a few minutes. Thank you. Martin. Um, my name is Martin Gonta. I'm working in the electronic music business since 20 years ago. I'm on other responsibilities and activities in the industry. I'm Creamfield South America shows promoter. And, um, well, that's it. <coughs> Hi, my name is Leo Sanchez from Industria Entretenimiento. We are the master franchise of Pacha brand in whole Latin America. First of all, sorry to need to read my notes, but my English is not very good. So I think it would be easier to understand me. I have some slides here to show you. I'm sure <laughs> most of you know about Brazil and about what I will tell you, but always useful to recall that. This is the Brazilian flag. This is the <coughs> America, old Americas. Here is America, Sur America. You know, you can see how big is Br Brazil. And I have some informations, basic informations, uh, like dimension is 8,500,000 square kilometers, 8,000 kilometers of coast, uh, beautiful beaches are there, population about 191 uh, million, uh, 191 million people, inhabitants, and the language is Portuguese. It's like about 17 Spains you can put inside Brazil. Uh, the currency is the real, uh, is the real, has been the Brazilian currency for the last 17 years. One euro is about 2.3 real, and one dollar is about 1.6 real. Mm. And <coughs> Brazil is like a multiple multicultural country. Mm. Uh, it's uh, the influence of the immigrant in Brazil is very big, such Africa, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Germany, Japan, and others. Of course, this influence this has in the music in Brazil too. I have some slides here, really nice. <coughs> in the slide, we can see the biggest influence in the north from the Indian roots, and in the northeast from African beats from the time of the colonization, colonization and the slaves. 
Indian in Samba, Ache, and Ferro. Then you have all the center of the country and the Midwest, where you find a really big influence of North American country lifestyle and the typical country music, which is called Sertanejo. Then <coughs> we have Rio Janeiro. Really, we have an issue there when we talk about Rio. Rio is a postcard of Brazil, but uh, with, with the one of the best and beautiful geographies in the world, all the cities building around the beaches and the mountains. The people who are born there are called Cariocas, and they have the, their own lifestyle, healthy, concerning with the body, beach time, and more focused on their life. Uh, you can pass by the beaches anything during the day, and they are full. The popular music is the samba, and the electronic music exists, but on a special date, a few artists. Here, Claudio can talk later better than me on that because he's the voice of Carioca experience. From Belo Horizonte and Sao Paulo to the South State, electronic music has its main development. First of all, people in this area are more cultured, more traveled, have more opportunity to study, go to university. Here in this area, Brazil has the biggest post-Second World War European immigration, like Germans and Italians. For that, Santa Catarina State is the most European region in Brazil. And because the long distance from the north and this European influence, this region has been less influence of the Brazilian North Beats. There you have the city of Florianópolis and Balneário Camboriú with the most important electronic clubs in Brazil, such Warungi, Rimbale, Pacha Florianópolis, and now the Queen Fit Festival. In this area, the red area, the electronic music have developed the most. I think it's a good summary. Thank you. Okay, I, sh um, I should mention we're kind of a motley crew up here. Um, we've got two native English speakers, two native Portuguese speakers, two native Spanish speakers, so we're gonna all mix it up. Um, like Claudia Brazil. has a little, little bit to, to add. Um, to what uh, Leo I, just is the presentation okay? Uh, if there's not no problem, I I can talk. Is it is that? No, the other one. Which is no, on this one. Okay, no, no problem. Uh, as Leo said, Brazil is a multicultural country that, uh, because of uh, his his its history, that you can read in the excellent Brazil on, ri on the rise from Larry. Uh, that exchanges cultural, cultural and musical influences worldwide. Uh, the weather, that's, uh, it's important for you European people. The weather is tropical all year long. We have beautiful sceneries, uh, beaches, and famous points of interest. Uh, and the public, uh, it's outgoing, happy Brazilian are definitely party people. Uh, we have, we are in a, a, a living in a, a huge economic uh, we have a huge market with uh, great economic growth. And like Leo said, we have uh, south and southwest are completely different from the north and the northeast. Uh, it seems it's two different country in one. So Brazil uh, is a country as big and as diverse as a continent. But uh, this is the good things, but we have the usual challenges uh, of an emerging country. The infrastructure is underdeveloped. We have lack of airports, railroads, and highways. We have a huge, very huge economic inequality. And the current tax system and the business law laws lag behind uh, the major countries. And uh, this all makes a very difficult market for the foreigners. We have the language barrier, uh, lack of organize, organized information of resources, and we have our Brazilian business network. So it's a country with uh, good uh, opportunities, but we, you must be well connected. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the electronic music and certain the music industry and, the w and why the reasons that we decided to make a conference, uh, a, a big meeting. Uh, in Brazil and South America, the entertainment ec electronic music industry are growing faster and faster. Hundreds and hundreds of new companies, professionals, agencies, clubs, promoters, work opening and creating a new market opportunity full of potential of deve for development. 
the South and the South American entertain, uh, and entertainment customer has already absorbed its, its culture and behavior. We have great clubs, The Edge, Green Valley, Warong, Sirena, Pasha, uh, uh, very huge festivals as Experience, Creamfields, uh, Rock and Rio, Chemical Music Festival, and big artists and producers as Giborato, Marky, Renato Coin, The Twelves, big names. So, uh, and as you know, uh, electronic music is not a category anymore. It's a way to produce every uh, stylish of music. And in Brazil, we have a lot of it, as Leo said. So this uh, opens much more opportunities. On the other side, electronic music competes with all these, these styles, gospel, asha music, bossa nova, forró, uh, hip hop. Uh, so we have uh, a huge diversity in, a, in our music culture. And uh, our market as our country is fragmented and spread out. And after 15 or uh, 18 years that we've imported this culture mainly from Europe as well, America, in 2009, when the time, at the time that RMC was born, there was a feeling that electronic music is, uh, culture has become sufficiently mature to have his its own uh, business meeting. Uh, so I want to present you the Real Music Conference. Uh, our mission is to propose a democratic, democratic ambient where South America players could grow and develop in an organized and integ integrated way. And uh, also to put the main executives, companies, and all, all the production chain uh, of electronic and entertainment business face to face in one unique city, one place, one week for them to create new business opportunities, exchange information, etc. And where uh, should this meeting be held? Rio de Janeiro is the, the wonderful city, the famous city in South America, and it transformed itself into a world class destination in, in less than a decade. Uh, we host the Pan, Pan America Games a few years uh, before. Uh, World Cup at the Olympic Games in 2016. So everybody knows wants and, and, and wants to go to Rio. So there is no better place to hold it. Uh, Rio also is Carnival, is the, the largest and most famous event in the world. So the season uh, to happen, this meeting uh, must be on the Carnival. And also it's a season that here in the Northern Hemisphere, the industry is low and cold. So, uh, we have a full week, it's seven days of event, with a full week of information, opportunities, academic activities, and business networking. We have two, there are two days of conferences like this, business, uh, a business fair. Uh, the difference that we are, uh, that we have free admission for people to see the, the news uh, and the launches of the industry. And we have some auditories with uh, panels, workshops, and information exchange. So that's it. Let's go on. I will talk a little bit later. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm since I'm not from this world uh, that the rest of you folks are from. Um, I'm going to try and get things rolling with maybe a little bit of a provocative question um, that's based on this economic boom that we're talking about, which makes Brazil uh, such an attractive market, and ask you guys who are there on the ground and have been for a long time. Is there going to be room for everybody um, as Brazil becomes a more attractive market to all the big names outside the country, in North America and in Europe? What's it going to be like for you guys competing with them? What, do they, what advantages do they have? What advantages do you have? And is there room for everybody? And I'll just throw it open to whoever wants to jump in. I, yeah, I start with, with just two numbers I want to give to the people, and that's those are very interesting numbers. There are nowadays in Brazil more than ten thousand Brazilian DJs playing at least once a month and getting paid for that. Ten thousand DJs. There are a hundred and three agencies in Brazil. That says something, right? Uh, where do those people play? You know, it, it's it's a big country, a, a lot of parties, a lot of clubs, everywhere. We are booking DJs to play in the Amazon. Sometimes uh, 
a, a guy called me and, and said, I, I live in this city. I have to look at the map to see how we're going to go there, if by train, by car, by airplane, because I have no idea where this guy is based. Uh, at the same time, uh, there are a lot of people from everywhere, all over the world, wanting to come and play in Brazil. So I'm not sure about the answer. Okay. Well, Martin, you've been on the ground probably the longest. So bring your perspective to how this situation, this boom in Brazil, is likely to play out. Well, I'm, I'm based in Buenos Aires. I'm from Argentina, and I've been working on the business since many years ago. Uh, of course, you know, oh we all South Americans are much more used, you know, to not good economic situations. So, <laughs> and Brazil itself has always been our big brother, yeah? Uh, even on the football, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, this situation, uh, what's happening in Brazil is, I'm, a, I'm involved personally on, on specific business in Brazil, but you know, um, the, the, the main thing that is happening is this, that this situation you know, is making South America a much more attractive region you know, for the industry itself, for everybody. And you know, just South America in a, in a competitive aspect with the, with the just first world, you know, just Europe and, uh, and United States, we've always been kind of a couple of steps wa backwards. So, you know, this situation that Bras Brazil is showing up with such a strength, you know, it's fantastic. So I'm really optimistic about everything. And of course, when, you know, if there's room for everybody, I don't think so. I don't think is that is room for everybody in any kind of business, you know. Uh, it's gonna be, you know, the, the, the us on the foot called the Premier League, the second division, third division. It's a matter of, you know, who's gonna be just playing the, the game in the best way and, and with uh, the most developed at proposal. Uh, we, we need to hear now an artist's experience. You said, what, 250 yeah, gigs? Probably yeah, probably over the past 10 years. Yeah. Um, I think the, 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 the market in Brazil is quite unique in terms of obviously you have a country that's huge, it's probably only comparable to somewhere like the whole of Europe or America. And Regardless of how America has come on in recent years, and uh, I know the figures that have been spouted around today and how it's selling, you can't com really compare it as a club market because America will be dominated always by music that's selling, so it's commercial artists, which is obviously a huge part of the industry. But Brazil is more open to kind of, I would say, across the board electronic music. Um, you know, I'm definitely not in the realm of a commercial artist, but. The last tour I did was maybe 20 dates, and the smallest club was maybe a thousand people, and the biggest was maybe up to 10 to 15 thousand people, um, and that's playing everywhere from close to the Amazon down to the farther cities in the south. Um, it, it really is a huge market, but as Martin says, I mean, there is never room for everyone in any market. You have to um, understand a culture. What you have to do has to be attracted to that culture, and you have to be good at what you do. Um, having said that, I think it is a potential for huge growth because you're talking about a country that's economically very strong at the same time it has a culture that embraces music always has done and people who really really enjoy to go out i mean it, it, it's a it never ceases to amaze me you can walk into a town that seems absolutely tiny a very sleepy place and the club is like two and a half thousand people and everyone's there till eight nine in the morning um so it, it, it is quite unique in that way um yeah well that's my perspective okay uh, i think one thing that is running through all of our comments in one way or another that I want to encourage the other panelists to bring out is that this huge entity we call Brazil, that there are these important regional differences and they have a lot to do with taste and different audiences want different things in different parts of the country. So let me encourage all of you who are on the ground to talk a little bit more about how Rio and Sao Paulo might be different from each other and how they're different from these other huge population centers in the north and in the south, um, which is obviously information that's important for anybody who's thinking of trying to establish a presence in, in Brazil. And who'd like to go first? Anybody want to jump in? Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say one thing only. Uh, even uh, my perspective, again, you know, cl just living in Buenos Aires and, you know, uh, always close to the big brother. Um, I think that uh, even there are cultural differences, we, we, we cannot forget that 
Brazil has the biggest party in the world, you know, that's carnival. So even it can be cultural differences, you know, they know how to have fun, how to party, and they absolutely love music. You know, nothing more uh, impressive than just going to the carnival and see how they feel the music, so it's on their blood. So that has a kind of a really additional, you know, added value for everything, so. Yeah, actually, let me make a personal um, observation that echoes that because it's one thing for the Brazilians who are up here to talk about how great Brazil is and the, and the role of the, um, the, the, how important music is in the culture, but when you get people who were born, you know, in, in the UK or the US, I'm from Chicago, you know, the birthplace of jazz and the blues. I have never in my life been in a place that's so musical as Brazil, that where it's in the air that people breathe and um, so essential a part of the, the culture. And carnival is a big part of that. Last week I was still in Brazil and a friend of mine showed me this video that just surfaced on YouTube of a tiny baby, um, maybe 11 months old or a year old, in diapers still, dancing on a table. <laughs> um, and it, it, the baby has what Brazilians call jinga, swing. Um, and, and it's absolutely astonishing to see that kind of thing, that how it's, I don't know, is it in the air, is it in the water? How does an 11 month old child have that kind of sense of, of swing and know how to dance to a piece of music. It's something that's so imbued in the culture um, that it's remarkable and it's one of the things that makes us from outside um, marvel at the place. Okay, having said that then, I'll pass the baton over here. W w one thing that I'd like to say is that EDM, as it's been called here, the conference, is that there are not two Brazils in one Brazil, there are many, many of them. Um, the influence and the stages that the dance music is, is in Brazil is very, very different. If you go to the north, uh, th those are like 10, 15 years ago. If you go to the south, they're open to the new sounds and, and new producers and new music. So uh, if you're an artist, you're a producer, you're a promoter, you want to go into Brazil and break the market, you have to think about uh, in what stage each city is and what to deliver because uh, it's been difficult to prove that a, a known artist in Europe or America or whatever uh, can come down to Brazil and get paid the same amount of money and can play two, three, five times as Leo does. But Leo has been uh, coming to Brazil for 10 years. Uh, and cultivating the market. Cultivating the market and, and getting paid little money the first time and now he's a multimillionaire. <laughs> but <laughs> But at the same time, um, uh, those are important things to say because we still have a lot of problems, uh, not only about this music aspect, but uh, about the taxation, about the logistics, about about the culture itself. And so uh, as good as it sounds, it's still Brazil. Someone else want to? Yeah. I, I I was just going to say one thing that you ca you know um, carnival aside, you really and the beauty of Rio, et cetera, et cetera, aside, and you can't compare Rio to San Paulo though, because yeah. San Paulo is to the outside world, Rio is the face of Brazil, but San Paulo, it, it, in terms of the economics of Brazil, is absolutely the heartbeat. Right. Um, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a huge, huge, huge mega lot. I mean, I don't know what they call a city that big, but it's like mega 20 market. million. Yeah, mm -hmm. 22 million 20 metropolitan. Million. I mean, I think this is maybe one of the most important things that we can emphasize is that even though Brazil's world image is that of the Christ statue with the arms outstretched and the girl from Ipanema and all of that, the real money and power in Brazil, this is downtown Sao Paulo on the cover of my book, and that image was chosen deliberately because that's where the money is, that's where the innovation is, um, and it's, you know, metropolitan, the state of Sao Paulo has more people than California. It's 40 million plus. Metropolitan Sao Paulo is 22 million people. Um, you know, Brazil has more cities of a million people than does the United States. There's cities that have a million, million and a half people that probably, you know, most people outside Brazil have never heard of. And they have discrete, they're discrete markets with discrete tastes. And let's see, uh, 
Yeah, like as we're saying, uh, definitely Sao Paulo is the heart of the industry. Uh, there is, uh, there is the place that launch festivals, new music, uh, new clubs. Uh, and there are also uh, huge markets, but no one has Sao Paulo. Uh, Santa Catarina is very big. Uh, Buenos Aires, Santiago, talking about South America. And uh, the, a, as Luis said, that we, that we in Brazil, we have 10,000, that's it, Luis, 10,000 DJs. At least, yeah. Uh, probably we are just starting. Probably people, more by now. People want to, 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 to develop this culture, and the, this culture is already absorbed, as I said. So there is uh, a potential uh, for the growth, but I have to be well connected and I have to know uh, this, this contrasts about the country. So what you're saying is that um, somebody from abroad, from North America or Europe, shouldn't think that they're coming in there bringing in something that has never been heard and never been done before and that they're immediately going to... We face a lot of examples that this do not work and people jokes and, and it's hard it's very difficult it's uh, a, 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 a country with uh, has just become a, a, a big economy and there are a lot of uh, stuff to do <laughs> in this uh, well, direction take, take the ultra festival for instance yeah uh, in the second or third year they never made money yeah no, and this year it, it won't happen anymore you want to bring uh, original concepts from Miami uh, during a time frame that everybody in the industry is there and want to bring into Brazil and develop a, a festival that you have to bring all the acts and pay a lot of money to be there at certain point and and of course sponsors are needed to do this kind of events but what brand want to sponsor another brand uh, you see uh, I did Scobits, Scob is a brand that says something, but is Co sponsoring another brand? Uh, I don't know. Not going to happen. I don't think so. So uh, it, it's tough, you know? It's very tough. So I, I, I don't see, don't come to Brazil. Yes, please, do come. Yeah, yeah we, need, we, we need the money. We need the investors. We need, we need to grow still. We are still emerging. But uh, uh, be connected. Uh, try to study the market. Um, liaise with, with some of us or... That's it. Uh, yeah. Some of the other 10,000 uh, <laughs> DJs. Yeah. All right, so um, in, in terms of some practical advice then, I if you're somebody from Europe or North America and you want to establish a presence in Brazil, what's the best way to, to go about doing it? I mean, you're saying, you know, liaison with people. Um, but but in, in concrete terms, I mean, wh what's the roadmap? What's the... Wh what What's the process? Y y if, you're a, if you're a producer or a DJ, um, y you have to have an agency there or uh, at least a sub agency. If you are you have a promoter, as Ma uh, Martin is based in Buenos Aires, he, he has uh, Brazilian partners now to do Creamfields in Brazil. Uh, uh, you have to be connected in some way uh, with, with someone who knows the culture well. I, I think it's the almost the same for you know, in almost every country, yeah. Of course, you can have a fantastic idea, but you know, the local, you know, just philosophy, the local logistics, and you know, and the market itself, you know, has a lot to do with the people that live there. So, uh, it's uh, and as times goes by, I think that that kind of situations get even mo even more important. You know, there's no way that you can just bring an idea, go to a country, and just put it there and, and roll on. There's no way. Leo, you want to? <coughs> yes. The we talk about the, the, the continental country, and you need to know exactly in what region of the country you expect to play, and what album you are going to face. Uh, make sure you know the kind of venue you will participate in, because unfortunately, more and more the commercial type of music is taking over. And one other important fact is for playing in Brazil, you need a work permit. <coughs> and mm -hmm. that requires li like uh, 30 days for a red tape. You need to have a, a visa, working visa. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's an important thing that people forget about. Um, the red tape is and can be yeah, you incredible. Need like 30 yeah. days. Yeah. Um, take a long time. Um, it's cumbersome. Uh, there's a lot of steps. Uh, this is part of the heritage that the Iberians brought over to uh, Brazil and 
and the other countries of, of, of Latin America. Um, and as they try to um, insert themselves into the, you know, the, the modern um, economic structure, it, it's a factor that um, holds things back. Uh, actually, I just thought that there's an, another way in terms of um, establishing local connections that, that both you and I <laughs> have done, which is to marry a Brazilian, right? Uh, yeah, or, there's or still or a lot of paperwork there. <laughs> 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 That's true, too. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. It, I think they, they are scared about Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not t we're not trying to scare, w I mean, we're, we're just trying to, g I I it's an, a really interesting situation because it's so dazzling, so promising um, but when you get down to the nitty gritty, there are um, barriers and impediments, and we're trying to give you um, a, a, a realistic view of what it's like um, in, in this, you know, colossus, uh, this developing colossus, to try to make, um, you know, a, a, a presence. Um, now, in, in terms, let's try to be maybe even more specific. In terms of styles, are there things that you want, you want to point to, things that go over better in Brazil than other things? Well, th that's an important issue because, you know, I think that we, we all, that we are sitting here, we all love what we do. Uh, so I think that one of, and, and on the other hand, we perceive, I think that we, we all think the same, that electronic music is passing through one of the most creative, creative moments on the history after you know, 25 years of, of electronic music being a more popular, yeah? So um, one of the main achievements that, you know, we, we can hopefully, you know, just uh, trying to help in South America is to find a way to develop, you know, or to help, not to develop, sorry, to communicate and just to be also communication channels for, for such a different and creative music which is showing up because, uh, Nowadays, things are very, very different than 10 years ago. And actually, now everybody's, uh, there's lots of producers, lots of DJs, and everybody's a journalist. So, uh, you know, it's a matter of finding the way. That's our, of course, we do this for business, and there are certain things that they deliver much more than other ones. Commercial things, you know, they are mostly just uh, uh, defined as commercial because, you know, it's more, they're more closer to the money, yeah? But I think that uh, th this moment, the, uh, what we, what at least under my point of view, uh, that I've been working on electronic music since many years ago. Hopefully, you know what's happening in Brazil, and you know, and as a consequence of that, also, uh, re by the way, the rest of South America is passing through a kind of much better situation economics-wise than about ten years ago. Uh, so, if we find a way that all together can help and just communicate more about what really is happening and with uh, these lots of DJs and producers and fantastic music that is all over the world. That would be the main thing. That's in relation to what you are saying about styles. Yeah, uh, um, actually y you're, you're <coughs> pointing to something that's really interesting to me as just an observer, someone who's not part of this industry, is to see that really in every area of pop now, you're seeing this phenomenon of the regional tour where somebody yeah. will come from let's say Europe um, from the UK, they'll, they'll do a show in Rio, Sao Paulo, um, Porto Alegre, on to Buenos Aires, then to Santiago, up maybe to Lima or, um, yeah, yeah. or, or Bogota, then to Mexico City, and then into the US. Um, and, and that's, you didn't see that 10 years ago is for sure. And, and five, I, I mean, I can remember, um, you know, the, the wave of bands like Franz Ferdinand. You and can see Rock in Rio, it's back to Rio now. Pardon me? Rock in Rio is back to Rio. Right, rack, right, exactly. There's an example. Rock in Rio, it's going to be in, what is it, January? I forget. September. 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 Yeah. September. The, start, the start of the Brazilian spring. <laughs> but um, l let me go back to the original point because I'm curious to know what kind of things simply won't go over um, I I for a Brazilian audience. I mean, we've had a couple of references to people who fell flat on their face coming in. Um, and, and I'd like to get a sense of what just doesn't work. If, if that can, can that yeah, be answered? Yeah, um, um, Leo can say something add to what I have to say. Uh, uh, festivals are different. In festivals you can show a, a large uh, variety of styles uh, because the attendance can pay for that. In, in clubs, 
is different. You have you open certain times a week, certain times a year. You have to make money on those those dates, otherwise you won't do w you won't do well. So I, I think club wise now in Brazil th they are suffering from from not the commercial sound but the more uh, easy sound because we don't have the CD sales anymore. People don't read magazines anymore. Uh, so the education is different. Uh, very, very different from five, six, seven years ago. So the the, the new clubbers, the, the new guys, uh, the new girls and boys uh, who are coming to the clubs now, they're interested in, in, in drinking and having fun. Uh, it's like looking at a painting or, or, or art. Either I like it or not, I don't care who, who, who did it, I just there to entertain myself. So that's going on a lot in the club world in Brazil. Well, I think a lot's changed um, since I first went there. I mean, I think the whole, I mean, you only had to sort of, unfortunately, we were pulled back after about five minutes of it. But when it showed David Guetta's figures of 45,000 people a day joining his Facebook, it's a very, very, very different world. And obviously, um, magazine coverage is much smaller these days. Um, to connect with the audience, there's a, a whole different way. And when you go to play in somewhere like Brazil, you, you follow a little bit the culture of the music. So Brazilians like music with energy, they like music with warmth. They, you know, not for a cliche, but they want something that they feel. Um, it's not, um, they don't want something dark, too moody. It's just, that's the culture, and you kind of adapt a little bit what you do for the culture. But I think that that's the same wherever you go as an artist. You know, if you, if you go to Berlin, you are focusing on the fact that they are totally embracing everything about new music. You know, you, you move around with anything in any scene. I think what Martin was saying, I don't think there's any sp thing so specific just about Brazilian in terms of how you um, adapt yourself to go into a market. You do everything with a care and a respect for the culture that you're entering, um, and you do your thing, but you, you try to learn a little bit as well, so that you, as much as you give, you take a little bit, and when you come back, you bring a bit more of that knowledge, and each time it develops. And obviously, anywhere you go, you work with people who are good at what they do, um, who understand the market, um, who are not just in anything to make a quick buck, um, because you know that's very short-lived. I think with electronic music, the people who've been in it a long time are people with a real focus to build something of quality. And I think Brazil, anywhere, that's always the case. There's there's one more topic that I, I think, um, and, and this is on the side of being realistic about things. There's one other thing that we haven't mentioned that I think maybe we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on at least briefly, um, especially now that we're in this run up to the World Cup in 2014 and then the Rio Olympics in 2016, which is gonna be focusing so much attention from the rest of the world on Brazil. And that's the question of violence. Right? I think we need to talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, uh, and we can debate whether Rio is more violent than Sao Paulo, um, uh, I suppose, among ourselves. Um, but I, I think all of us have been in situations at, at gigs that w where, where problems break out, no? Um, I must say that the government of Rio are really, they are really doing a good job uh, now the, the favelas, the, the mountains, are pacified, and uh, the, the uh, sense of peace is starting to, to, to spread out all over the city. So uh, I really must say that uh, 10 years from now is a huge difference uh, about this issue in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I wanted to add one thing. I, I feel very much as... Um, I think from the first moment I ever went to Brazil, it always shocked me um, the level of security that the people in the sort of middle class and above live with. I mean, it's, it's something if you've never been, you, you'd find very hard to believe. It, you know, they have guards on the, the apartments where they live, all the gates are locked. I mean, everything is a totally different world um, to coming from London. And it's the thing that I really feel that is the problem with it, apart from the obvious problem with the great disparage of wealth between the rich and the poor, there's another problem. The very wealthy in Brazil and the people in charge, the politicians, it's a very corrupt system. And every day, every week, you will read about another politician stealing money, doing what they can to kind of fill their own pockets rather than help society. And I think it's a very hard situation to expect the poorest 
to not want to grab what they can grab if at the very top there's no one leading by example. Um, so you have the problems of the economics and the culture, and I think that that is the biggest area that if that's addressed a little bit, if people in the power are pulled down seriously for being corrupt, I think it can feed down the culture. Yeah. Com combined with education and the economic growth yeah. now? That's, that's the, the, the only solution. That's common in almost all Latin America. We are, you know, everybody's like this. That's the, the main point. I, I, you mean? Corruption. Yeah, corruption, yeah. of course, you know, and the rich and the poor and the corruption in the middle, you know, that makes a lot of issues and problems. And then how can you stop the people just, you know, trying to find the, their own justice yeah. Yeah. And by, by their own? You know, this is how this started. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I'm glad you mentioned Rio because, um, you know, I just came from Rio last week, and one of the things I'm interested in is this pacification of the favelas that yeah. you mentioned. Because, you know, th 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 in Brazilian culture, there's this tendency for things to be born up in the favelas on the hillsides and then come down to what they call the asphalt. Um, and, you know, 10 years ago, I used to go a lot to um, what they call bailes de funk, or funk carioca. Um, and it got too violent, actually, um, for reporters to be able to go. Mm -hmm. There was a famous case where one reporter, I'm thinking of Tim Lopez, yeah. went to do a story about um, the, the, the funk dances. And, and this is a great source of rhythm, man. These, these funk dances were incredible that way. Um, and they still are. Um, but a reporter who went up there to do a story about gang leaders who were dr giving drugs to teenage girls so they could have sex with them, he got killed, and so after that, reporters didn't go. Now, th because of the Olympics coming up and the World Cup, the government is, um, you know, as Claudia was saying, making an effort to bring things under control, and a lot of the favelas um, are being pacified. There's still some big ones that aren't, Pocinha. Yeah. Mainly, uh, mainly because of this uh, big event, and uh, we, call, we call the corredor, uh, the way that the, de the delegates will pass these favelas round, uh, it's now pacifically. Okay, um, anybody wanna say something about Sao Paulo in this regard? Um, Sao Paulo, yeah, is the same, but <coughs> the thing is, the favelas are not located in the center of the town, it's on the periphery, you know, in the surrounding areas. So you can see it happen, but it happened. You have 10 minutes? Okay. Okay, okay thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Can we um, try and speculate a little bit for folks about where um, Brazil is going to be when these events take place in 2014 and 2016, both as a country and both in terms of the music scene, how it's going to have developed in the next uh, few years. L l l let's do a little bit of speculation. I'm very optimistic. Yeah, things are going to move forward. I think that <coughs> Brazil Football World Cup has all the possibilities to be one of the best World Cups ever. You know, the passion of the people, you know, the country, the moment that they are passing through, you know, the party spirit, you know. So, and if all these security things, which of course, there are some measures that th they're already taken. Uh, I think it's going to be fine uh, on that on that uh, side. And uh, regarding music, you know, I, I have no uh, no way not to be optimistic on 100 percent. Let me give a, a ask a, you know, a, a concrete example here. I can remember when I first went to Brazil in the 1970s when reggae started creeping in, and within a couple of years. Um, there was something developed called Samba Heggy. And it's a, you know, it, it's a very Brazilian kind of hybrid. And I, I'm wondering whether you guys on the ground see the, uh, are there signs of hybrids? Yeah, there is Samba Rock now. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. But, yeah. I, th I think, I think that, um, um, we, we Brazilians love to dance, right? We are musical uh, people. Uh, and the warmer the music, the better for us. So um, organic instruments, vocals, anything that makes 
uh, melody and, and, I don't know, this warmth we're talking about. Uh, good, real girl in Brazil. I mean, uh, uh, minimal was good, but certain points. Techno was good in certain clubs and festivals, but house music is always there, you know? So uh, um, I if you talk about styles, there are clubs and, and spaces for everyone, but the main thing the the, the, the in general will be elements and more and, and house music. I don't see it differently, but I'm very op op optimistic as well, very. Okay, I mean, I, I think you hit on something that's profound in terms of a debate that's going on in Brazil for decades and decades, which is, uh, y the word you used was organic. And you see people arguing against electronic and saying, no, it's not organic. It, th that it, it can't compare to samba, it can't compare to forro um, and, and all these other indigenous sounds, which, you know, those wooden instruments and the stretched um, leather uh, of the tambourine and, and all, all that sort of thing. Um, so y y you want to ad address that point as well? Uh, it's just a different point of view. So, um, I mean, Caetano Veloso and Gilberto Schiu can, can say it differently, but it's the same thing. The way you do music now is, is, is different than, be than before. It's going to be different in 10 years or five years. So there is a kid with a, with a CD now, uh, sorry, with, with a computer doing, a, doing an, a music. And it's good music, so what is different from, uh, I don't know, music being done 10 years ago? It's just different. Yeah, actually, um, th this is another interesting thing you've hit on. You mentioned Gilberto Gil. Brazil is a country where a pop star can become minister of culture. And Gil was minister of culture for seven years. And one of the things he did was to establish a policy of, you know, the pontos culturais, cultural yeah. points, in the favelas and other, you know, neighborhoods on the periphery where kids were encouraged to work with yeah, they built the studios in the favelas, exactly. yeah. He was a fantastic uh, minister of culture, yeah. We still miss them, because the one we have now, I don't know. <laughs> right. Um, she may not last. But I but don't think so. But, um, but you know, I, I think this says something about Brazil. The idea that a pop star should be the minister of culture and be open to all these things. You know, Gilles invented a phrase um, back in the days of, of tropicalismo in the 1960s. He talked about a gelea geral, a, a general jelly is the literal translation. This notion that everything mixes and comes together um, and you get these incredible, um, unpredictable hybrids. Um, anybody else want to talk ab about maybe what hybrids? You, you want to venture a guess? No. Not really. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next thing. All right. Yeah. It's a sucker's game. Right, trying to predict the future. <laughs> and, and down here at this end, anybody want to weigh in with any final thoughts, Leo? Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> oh, uh, returning to the, to the Puerto Rico ideas, uh, one of the problems, talking about the, the culture of uh, electronic music, is uh, uh, the clubs will be in charge of electronic music education. And nowadays, the picture is different, no? the class has been transformed into a meeting point of Facebook and other social networks, and unfortunately, the music is only a background track to this encounter. Uh, the club owners are doing all the same, no? preferring to hire a local socialite or PR DJ. They will not risk in less known performer <coughs> who will not meet the expectation of the audience. That's one of the big problems today. All the clubs are doing the same. You have samples, but all the people do the same, the yeah. same music, more commercial. This is one of the big problems, I think, for, for the future of the music in, in electronic music in Brazil. All right, let me, let me close this then with one last observation, which is the, the antidote to what you're talking about, that concern of yours. If you go to a samba school in Rio de Janeiro, the people are there to dance and to listen to the music, and it's a different scene exactly. from the clubs. So carnival and the samba, there's something eternal about that. Yeah, they have it in, the, in the blood. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's in the blood. Yeah. Um, and, and you know what? When we go, us outsiders, it gets in our blood too. So um, yeah, but that, that's kind of, you know, maybe what Louis said regarding festivals. And, and we all know that, you know, 
the clubs are absolutely crucial for the electronic music. So we need clubs in order to feed up the people and just to deliver, you know, new things and sounds. That's uh, that's the main thing. We, uh, there, uh, you got Berlin as an example that you know is famous all over the world regarding their music, and I'm absolutely sure that that has to do, apart from all the producers and DJs and everybody that lives there, they have three, four fantastic clubs, which are you know whatever 400 capacity, but the most amazing experience that you can have. So that's, that's it, it's still the heart of electronics. So if we are gonna be um, depending on the future of the electronic as a hybrid form, yeah? From the big events and festivals only, that's, that's, that's the problem. All right, well, we're, thanks for your patience, everybody. Um, uh, we're gonna be around, so, um, you know, speaking for myself and I hope for the others, uh, if you have additional, if you have questions you'd like to ask, just, you know, come up and, and ask us, we're happy to, talk about whatever um, you like to talk about in particular. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.